Welcome back, writers. You know, I came to school today for a couple of reasons. For one, I was feeling a little bit nervous about today's video. And you know what? That's not normal for me. I've been doing lots of videos for you now for the last few months, and I've gotten very comfortable with them. And you have too. We've all gotten sort of used to this new normal that we're in, right? As writers, and even as readers and scientists and mathematicians, I've gotten very used to these videos. But I was feeling a little bit nervous, and I couldn't figure out why. And I was driving over here, and I thought, it's because it's the last video. It's my last video to you. And that makes me feel like it has to be super duper perfect and super duper good. And so that is part of the reason why I came here is because I wanted to be in our room at my writing bulletin board. And I have to be honest with you, a lot of the furniture is put away and like shoved off to the side. So I couldn't even really get at my easel where I wanted to sit on the rug with you. So please forgive me for sitting in a new spot. I know you're not used to it, but I got to thinking as I was driving over here and I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you about writing. And in a minute, I'm gonna go through all the things that we've done together this year so we can really relive those wonderful moments together. But the biggest thing that popped into my brain as I was driving over here is that if I could teach you one thing about being a really good writer, it would be to always revise, always edit, but always trust your first cut your first take. Trust that it's going to be you coming through. And really good writers know that after that they go in and they polish and they fix and fancy and edit it. But your first cut will always be the very first, mo most real, most authentic piece of you. The fixing and fancying makes it even better and shinier for the world. But when you come through in your writing and that first take, that's your honest, most real, true, genuine self. And so always trust that, writers. Always trust that what's coming from your heart is good and okay, even if it's not perfect. So I'm gonna take just one cut for this today. Cut means like video, one version. I'm gonna just do this once and I'm gonna trust that it's okay and that you'll be okay with it and I'm not gonna worry about it. So that being said, a couple things I wanna do today. And I wanna to talk to you first about kind of what we've done this year and then I have a book I actually wanna to read to you. So first what I thought we would talk about is Structure, craft, and conventions. I feel like I've heard that before. It was a long time ago. It was the beginning of the year. Do you remember when we talked about how your writing is like a house? So we talked about structure, craft, and conventions is like how you write a narrative. Now we think of the structure of a house. Have you ever seen a house being built on your street or on another street? When it first gets put up, it's just those bare bones, just those planks of wood and lumber and everything's open on the inside, but you have just the, the frame of the house and the roof. It's that structure. That's how you plan for your writing. Your structure is basically like your, your, uh, your lead, your introduction, and then you've got body paragraphs and the conclusion. Those are all parts and nuts and bolts of your writing that are important, really good grammar, spelling, but that's not the heart of your writing. What comes after structure is next, remember, craft. That's my favorite part. The craft is where you come through. The craft is like, hmm, got the house. Now we're going to make it ours. We're going to put in our own favorite furniture, maybe some beanbag chairs, maybe some real fluffy rugs. Oh, maybe a really, really fancy couch with some bright colored pillows. And if you're like me, you probably put a lot of photos on the wall of friends and family. Oh, and you might even get really cool lighting. You're putting in that craft. That's where your elaboration comes through in your writing. When you add details, when you make it juicier, when you elaborate, when you don't just tell somebody how your story is going to go, you show them. You don't just say, we won the game, it was fun. You elaborate. You show all those details. You use dialogue, you use imagery, you bring that, that movie into your reader's mind. That's your craft. Now, you might be wondering, well then what's conventions? Okay, well let's think about this house. This house now has all this beautiful furniture in it. We've gotten it just the way we want it. It feels like it's ours. We're very proud of it, right? Well, the conventions are where we fix and fancy. If I'm getting ready to have a party because I've just made my house so perfect, I'm gonna wanna go around and make sure that all my pillows are fluffed, 
that I've vacuumed the carpet, that I've put away all the dishes, oh, that maybe I've got some balloons out front, and then I mowed the yard and planted flowers. It's when I go through and check on all parts of my house and make sure that it's ready to go, right? Okay, so when you're writing, that's when you go back and you revise, which means you write, you, you add in, you change things, or you even find different ways to say something. And then you edit. Yes, you edit. Third grade writers do not leave a piece of writing without editing it, okay? You know that. Don't break that rule. So we have our structure, craft, and conventions. I hope that that little run through that, that memory of that house kind of helps jog your memory of what we talked about at the beginning of the year. Because right after we did that, do you remember what we went right into? One of my favorite units of all third grade, personal narrative. Do you remember what that was, writers? Your personal narrative? Your personal narrative, personal because it was all about you and it was, it was unique to you. But it was a story about a small moment in your life. Do you remember that? Do you remember talking about small moments? Small moments. I remember telling you the example of when I used to live in Chicago. And that's when I learned my love of writing, by the way. And I would ride the L train, which is like the subway in Chicago. And I would keep a little journal with me and I would watch and notice every little unique thing that was happening around me. Maybe it was a street musician that had gotten on the train and was singing to people. Or maybe it was a woman who had, had really interesting jewelry and a funny hat. Or maybe it was a little boy who was crying and his mom was trying so hard to soothe him, but it wasn't working. And I was writing about, about that. All these things that I noticed. An old man wearing a very peculiar looking old suit. I would take a small moment and I would write down those little moments. And then later I would go back and pick one, just one, and write a whole story about it. I would take that old man with a really interesting looking old suit and I would make up a story about him, about who he was, where he'd been, where he was going, his life story. I would make it up all on my own. What you did was you brainstormed small moments in your lives, like Ron, the swim meet. Uh, Cooper Fouch, you did a swim meet too, do you remember that? And Maya, the music playing at the, at the park when you and your mom went, went to, and there was live music playing outside and there was a pond nearby. Remember that? And Maddie, you wrote about when your, your mom's friend had a baby. I remember all of these stories so well because you did such a good job writing about those small moments in your lives. And then, do you remember what we did? Do you remember how we celebrated that writing? Oh, it was one of my favorite days. We put our desks facing each other in twos, and then you had your own piece written on a big piece of blue construction paper. And then your neighbor had a batch of those bright yellow, bright yellow post-its that we called golden compliments. You remember that? We didn't call them post-its, no, no, no. They were golden compliments where you would read your piece and your friend would listen to you and write a compliment about your story, anything that you did really, really well. And at the end of that session, at the end of that day, you had a whole piece, a whole batch of compliments from your fellow writers about your writing. That was one of my absolute favorite days in writing. How about you? Did you love that day? Then we were getting in ready for the holidays. And I remember we did some fun writing around Halloween, some, some creative rights. And then around Christmas time, holiday time, what we did was you did, we had one day in here where we had different activities where some of you would write about the perspective of a snowblower or, oh my goodness, I remember Charlotte making an acrostic poem about being at home on vacation. I remember her standing up here and me giggling at the way she read it. And you did all kinds of creative writes all about holiday break and what you do in winter. And that, that was one of my favorite days in here too. Then when you came back after holiday break, we went right into informational writing. Do you remember that? Informational writing. Now that might be what's most currently in your brain because that's one of the last things we did in here together. So i put that one up here. And I know, Will, I know this was one of your favorite units. You were so excited about the writing you were doing. I remember it very well. And I remember Cooper, you were writing about all the different NBA players, or maybe it was, I can't remember, you changed your mind a couple of times. One time it was all famous quarterbacks in the NFL. And I remember really loving that because I love football too. I remember your informational writing being so interesting because you chose topics that you cared about and that you knew a lot about. And so I got to know you more as writers. For example, I remember Olivia writing about dogs and I knew she loved dogs, but I didn't know it was that much. So that was a really fun unit. And when you put those books together, those informational books, 
you used things like, Ayanna was very good at this, expert words. You used expert words. Those were like, not just saying the water was boiling. Expert words was like sizzling. It's like elaborating, but it's very specific to the thing you're talking about. It's an expert word. Not just saying the foot of a dog, you say the paw, the specific piece of the, the object that you're writing about or the topic that you're writing about. It's that very exact name for what you're describing so that your reader can come away with a very good understanding of what you're teaching. Okay, another thing that you did in that writing was text features. Some of those were using captions, using uh, a glossary, or even writing uh, like, a, like a diagram or a drawing. Anything you could do when you're writing to really make it a lot more interactive for your reader, to teach them more, to give them something to look at on the side, a glossary in the back to explain all those big expert words that maybe you didn't know. Text features really help good informational writers make their, st their stories organized and make them informative and give as much information as possible and with an, in an easy to read way. And they also bring variety to their writing. Another thing that you did in your informational writing was this is part of the text features, is your table of contents. Now, I remember that was the first thing we did. And I remember one day where Jet came to the front of the room and read us his table of contents about the Titanic. You remember that? And Cameron, oh, you were doing the Titanic also. And you were all so surprised that a table of contents can actually be where you really elaborate and get very specific and make sure that your the ways that you're describing your chapters is brings your writing to life, right? Not just saying, Chapter one, when the Titanic was built. No, 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 no. You did a ship of dreams, I think is what you did, right, Jet? You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a little while. But we took what that chapter was going to be about and came up with a clever, sort of catchy and writery kind of title to it. And then when you've got the, when you had those table of contents ready, then it was time to write. And I know a lot of you were, wanted to hurry right into the writing and we had to say slow slow down we're going to do the table of contents first and once you figured out how to really dig in and do that well you were ready to go and then the next thing that we did together as writers this year came at right as we were getting ready to shift into being at home we started doing persuasive writing but then we got cut off because we had to go home and be at home for our learning and so mrs richards took a little bit of a minute and thought about what is the most important thing I want to teach you at this time that we have left? And we did one of my most absolute favorite things of all. And I would maybe argue, looking back, an area, it was a, not a unit, but a topic that I got to know you in ways that I never had before. One of my favorite topics this year was your journal writing. I know Fiona, you even put on your um, end of your slideshow, your favorite topic in writing was your journal writing. And that made me so happy, so very happy. Now, not as happy as I would have been if I could have been with you, Fiona, or any of you in your journal writing. I, Anna, you would send me daily what you're writing about, and I loved that. It would have been better if we were together, but journal writing brought us closer together, don't you think? I do. So I'm gonna put that one up here. That was one of my favorite things that we did this year some of the things you did with your journal writing. You did, you know, I've got all my post-its here. You did reviews. You did a how-to, put these up here. And you're probably listening them up in your head right now, aren't you? One of you, I think I just heard one of you say, don't forget poetry, poetry, right? Oh, you did lists, I forgot to make one for that, but you did lists, oh my goodness, Joe, you did a great list about, what was it again, I think it was about Something having to do with Disney World, all the things to do at Disney World. And then you'd also did a poem, an acrostic poem about Disney World, Joe. You must really love Disney. Letter to Future Self. That was one of the first ones we did. And that was one where I really loved when you kind of thought about what you're doing right now, how you're making your place in history right now during this unprecedented time. And then you also did, these are one of some of my favorites, some interviews, right? Boy, I loved reading those. Most of you interviewed a parent, and I loved what your parents got to learn about you through this interview. Yes, because some of the questions you chose showed a little bit about where you are right now. And then the last one that you did, the very last one that we did together, is perhaps my favorite. Can you remember it? 
it starts with a P, perspective. We talked about perspective. Perspective is how you see things, how you feel things, how you interpret something. It's the way that you look at things. It's the way that you react to a situation. And it has to do with your hopes and your dreams and your feelings. And oh my goodness, every single one of us has had some pretty big feelings over the last few months, haven't we? Mm -hmm. I'm having some pretty big feelings having to say goodbye to you, even though it's not really goodbye. It's just see you soon. But we talked about perspective and how it's really important, not just as a writer, but as a person to flip our perspective from time to time. Jack, I know you had a really good perspective flipping that you wrote about, but how you get to spend more time with your family and with your dog, Ollie. And we took things that, that we're thinking about and feeling right now, and we flipped our perspective to look on the bright side or the other side of the coin. We thought about how there's always a different way to look at something. And we did also do some writing over the last few weeks about literary essay. And we didn't do a lot with that because that's one of those topics that I know is going to be so much better when I can do it with you in person. But I'm going to include it up here because I want you to know that when you go into fourth grade, you are going to be doing essay writing. And you're going to be able to say to your fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Richards already taught me about essays. And you're going to be ready, that much more ready. In your literary essay, we talked about the very important first thing you do, which is to pick a thesis to make a claim, to put your stake in the ground and say something strong about what you're feeling. A thesis. You also, in your paragraphs, in your three paragraphs, you used evidence and reasoning. You chose evidence, think exact quotes from the story or just details that you chose to help back up your claim, to help prove your claim to convince your reader of what you were trying to say. And then you had reasoning where you talked about why you chose that evidence and how that evidence supports your claim and shows what you're trying to say. And then writers, the last thing that you did was you wrote a conclusion. And that was just where we came in and what? Mm -hmm. Wrapped it up. We wrapped up our gift. We wrapped the whole thing up. We said something to kind of repeat our thesis and some statement to leave our reader knowing that we had just finished our essay. You wrapped it up. Whew. That's a lot. We've done a lot this year together, haven't we? Oh my goodness. I think back over some of my favorite memories and I know I just talked to you about how much I loved, 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 loved the day where we shared our writing with each other at our desks and get the golden compliments. But what you'll probably notice when I talk about Charlotte standing up here or learning about what Olivia was going to write or all of you, the topics that you chose, coming up next to you with my clipboard and my pen and sitting next to you and talking to you about your writing, those were some of my favorite moments because I got a little window into who you are. And what I want you to know about writing is that writing is not difficult. So many parents tell me at the beginning of the year, oh, so-and-so, loves reading, loves science, but just struggles with writing. And I always want to say, oh, guess what? Really good news? Your child is already a good writer. Because kids are really good at noticing things and feeling things. We know that, right? If you can notice and feel, you can write. And so writers, as you go into fourth grade, I want you to know you are already ready. My mom used to say that to me when I was little and I would get nervous about something in school. She would say, Meg, you are already ready. Her other favorite one was, you are already all right. Everything's going to be okay. And so writers, what I want to do today as we close out is I want to read to you one of my absolute favorite stories. You've probably heard it before. And if you have it, this won't be the last time because you'll be hearing it again as you get older. And it's one of my favorite authors. It's written by Dr. Seuss. And it's called, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Now, if you've heard it before, do me a favor, enjoy hearing it again. Just become that much more um, aware of the, of the language that's used and connected to the story, okay? And if you haven't heard it, well then congratulations. This is the first time for you. You're going to love it. Now, Dr. Seuss uses very clever language 
And I love that some of the words he even uses, uses aren't real words. And that's okay because it's his story. He can do that, right? As, you're, as I'm reading, I want you to think to yourself about being ready and already being ready and already being all right. Okay. Oh, the places you'll go. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You can't see it very well, I know. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You look up and down, look, oh, you look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. That's you. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out, out, out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just go right along, you'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. That's gonna be you next year. You're gonna be a high flyer in fourth grade. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch and your gang will fly on and you'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump. And the chances are then you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. I can relate to that. I've been in kind of a slump the last few months, haven't you? Mm -hmm. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stray out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or, go, or right, or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite, or go around back and sneak in from behind. Simple, it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start in, into race, down long little roads at a breaknecking pace, and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. Hmm for people just waiting waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the, the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or a no or waiting for their hair to grow everyone is just waiting waiting for fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a sitting of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone 
is just waiting. It kind of reminds me of what we've, where we've been lately. Yeah. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. This banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky. Ready because you're that kind of guy or girl. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame! You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not. All alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. It's like a math test that we get so scared of that we don't think we can go on, right? Hmm. But on you will go, through the weather be foul. On you will go, through your enemy, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the heck and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. Love that picture. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever and wherever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. And you will, and will you succeed? Yes, you will, indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Kid? You'll move mountains. So, be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai, Allie, Van Allen, O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Fourth grade is waiting and you are ready, writers. I want you to think about as you go today, and I want you to think about for the rest of the summer while we're apart and while you're with your families or no matter how things turn out this summer, I want you to think about the fact that how you see the world, that perspective you have is how you write. The way you see the world is the way that you write. And so writers, I want you to keep on seeing. I want you to keep on feeling. I want you to keep on noticing. And writers, no matter what, no matter what, just, you know what to do. Just keep writing. I love you all, and I will see you so very soon. Off you go. <laughs>